they've got lobsters, the blue lobsters. Oh, it's locked. <laughs> There's a good chance that all your fish are going to be absolutely fine. I mean, I didn't think I would like it. Oh, in you go. Yes. I can't pronounce that. Oh, hello. That's Gary's home, look. This is my new home. Thank you. Welcome back to the vlog guys. So the Asian Fisher Chrome you can see behind me is reaching its peak. To be honest, initially I did think that stocking level was done. But ever since a few of you told me there's a certain fish I could get a mix in there that would more than likely be okay, I can't stop thinking about it and I really want to add them. But before I do that, I want to just do a massive hack back on everything. Like there's so, so many plants. I want to bring the pearl weed right down to a low level and trim everything right back so it's really compact it'll grow again in no time and you know it, I need, it needs a fresh sort of well not restart but I've never actually hacked it right back to the point where it's really 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 I mean when George came and did it that's kind of what he did but I want to go even further just go go right back down to basics So I've said to you guys many times before, the reason my tank gets in this kind of state is because I just hate trimming the plants. In the past, I've had problems with like, not wanting to get rid of the plants. So when I trim them, I bunch them together and then I put them in other tanks. And then before you know it, every tank's got pearl weed in. <laughs> you guys are always joking about that, but it is true. But I've stopped doing that now. When I'm trimming this lot, it's all going. I'm not keeping any of it. I've got some friends that want some. Um, I've got some people I know that want some, you know, but obviously the majority of it I can't keep and I know loads of you want me to send them to you But can you imagine if I just spent all my time making it to, making little packages and posting them out everywhere? I wouldn't, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to make any videos would I but this is the first time I've hacked everything right back in this way And I'm really pleased with how it's turned out actually I didn't think I'd like such a sort of formal aquascaped look um, It's not really sort of what I usually go for but it looks really good and it's probably the best looking aquascaped aquascape tank why do i keep doing that i don't know why i keep doing that <laughs> it's probably the best looking aquascape tank i've actually done to be fair right we're all set ready to go let's go get some new fish okay i'm at the fish shop and down here look they've got no, let me turn you around They've got lobsters, the blue lobsters. They're only little baby ones at the moment, but I really want to get some of these, or one of these to be fair. They get quite big, you see, like 30 centimeters. Massive, big things, but really cool. And do like a little setup for them. Not gonna get it today though, because obviously I want to research more before I do that. We're here today for some grummies. The honey grummies, here they are. Oh, booties. Got some good colors on them, top ones. A bit pale there, but, oh, look at that one nice so we've got red tail ones robin ones gold red tails and robins i like the robins because they'll go really well with the blues wouldn't they the powder blue grammy and we've got a nice selection of tetra here to go in the amazon tank again i'm not certain what i'm going to start with yet but i do like the silver tips and they school really well as well so that could be quite cool look at them there look <laughs> Right, I think I want to do three of the red robins and then three of the honeys. And then we've got like a little bit of variety, a bit more colour. I mean, they're basically the same fish anyway, so we've got no issues there. It's just different colour varieties. Click subscribe. Ooh. <laughs> right, so I'm back with the honey grammys. Now, old me, stick some straight in the tank. When there's only a few fish in your, in your tank, you can maybe take a little chance or not quarantine in, and then if there's any problems, treat the fish. But there's, there's a lot of fish in here now. You know, there's a lot of value in them. They're my fish. I don't want to risk it when there's this many. So the, these grammys are going to go into one of the uh, storage tanks or, or quarantine tanks, I guess, plant tanks. The cube tanks in the next door. Let me take you in there. Oh, it's locked. <laughs> Well, this tank here is quite free. Um, there's lots of swim room. Obviously, there's plants in there, but you know, there's plenty of room for the fish we've got. First of all, 
get them floating in there in the bag and then we can just put them in after those temperature are acclimated um, this light probably looks quite bright on the camera but it's not very bright at all especially with the with the lid on so we don't need to turn all the lights off and everything Okay, in they go, guys. Oh, in you go. Yes. Oh, yes, they look stunning. There they are. They're sort of hiding around a little bit at the moment. Colours a little bit sort of dull, but, you know, that's to be expected. They won't be settled in. But, you know, they've got a nice, heavily planted little tank, tank to sort of just chill out in for a while so i'll probably keep them in here for about a week they've been at the shop for three weeks the guy said they didn't see any problems at all but just want to keep them in here just to make sure you know another week won't hurt will it and just to watch them a little bit more awesome so we've got these guys in here now and right next to them we've still got the corys um i'm not seeing any problems at all so they very shortly will be going into the discus tank which is also fully recovering from some awful gri green slime and grime algae like it's just oh sorting that right out oh i've been told i need to say algae not algae <laughs> in the uk we say algae <laughs> yeah the corys are doing great every single one of them spot on and some of you noticed that they're barbells is it barbells bars but whatever their whiskers had sort of been worn away from where they were kept in the shop of course gravel but they seem to be growing back nicely and doing well that one's starting to get some stumps back there was nothing there before you see so yeah that's awesome so even though the tank has been set up for a while and the filter's been running for about a good month now uh, it's still a good idea i think when you add fish to always add in even more beneficial bacteria it just gives you that sort of insurance that everything's going to be well not completely but there's a good chance that all your fish are going to be absolutely fine so we need to put some in now and in you go just a little bit follow instructions and then tomorrow i'll add more as well oh there's one of them They're a little bit shy at the moment obviously they haven't been in long but they'll come out colors are starting to get bright and brighter by the minute but just come on through into the other studio i mean the tank is looking oh <laughs> slam the door the tank's looking so good isn't it look at that i mean i didn't think i would like it but i really really do <laughs> i like both ways but this it just looks like a lawn doesn't it it looks like you could do play bowling on it so i don't know <laughs> whatever but the fish awesome swimming around these are harlequin rasporas and i think i've got like a mix of there's one other that's like possibly not harlequin it's yeah that one there look it's like properly orange i don't i don't know why it, it looks a little bit different to the rest of them maybe just a slightly different one i don't know anyway overall though yes the tank so now i've hacked back all that pearl weed hello that's female grammy down there they're powder grammy um dwarf grammy technically but powder blue female you, you know what I mean. But now we've exposed none of this. You couldn't see any of that Altenamphora. Um, <laughs> you guys know I can't pronounce that. Oh, hello. Now look, now the grass has been hacked back. The coolie loaches are out. There's one there. There's one there. Peeking their little heads. They're like, what on earth is going on? And where, what, what have you done to our home? <laughs> they're, I mean, they're not dead. Trust me. They just, they stay like that. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. La 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 la. Oh, come back. Come back. Where's he gone? Oh, there he is. Going nuts. Why? Will you just calm down? I'm trying to focus on you. He'll go and chill again now, won't he? But yeah, it's getting later on in the evening now. So, you know, they start to become far, far more active in the evenings. And, and that's what I'm seeing there. Except for this guy who's just like, nope. Nope. <laughs> Update on the clam. There is the clam. I can now see it. Uh, it's got, it's open and it's moving i just saw it move slightly as well so he's doing all right i mean there can't be any flow down there but it's obviously getting along absolutely fine so no complaints the george farmer fern also still going strong doesn't seem to have grown at all but uh, that snail's enjoying this that's gary's home look this is my new home thank you So as mentioned to you guys, the uh, discus aquarium behind me, you can see the lights are off. So I've reduced the lighting quite substantially just to try and knock this cyanobacteria on the head. I think I'm winning. I'm not seeing anything like the same amounts that there was. There's just a little trace of it left. So I'm just gonna keep this, the, uh, the measures that I'm doing to going a little bit longer. And that has been sort of less feeding 
um, which is, you know, you still got to be careful. You still got to give the fish enough. Like they're big fish, aren't they? Remember, so they still need a good amount of food. I've just been doing it like every other day instead of every single day. Uh, reduce the lighting levels, more water changes. I've been getting right into the sand as well and stirring it all up, and that all seems to be working. So yeah, I've just flicked the light on. Look, so look at that sand now. The sand is looking absolutely perfect. Um, so I've also added this wave maker in. Now that looks like a big wave maker. I, it's cheap one, so it's not actually that fast. Like just shooting it upwards at the top of the water. Fish, not bothered by it. I think they like the additional flow. You can quite often see them going right into it and then they'll come back again. They're waiting for me to feed them now. So yeah, we'll do that in a minute. But yeah, look, all the plants looking so much, so much healthier. So much, so much healthier. You can see the remnants of some cyanobacteria C on this lily pipe here. So it's gone that sort of shriveled look. Now that's what it does when it's dead and you'll be able to just wipe that off real gentle now, which is awesome. Again, on some of those stems in the background there, you can see there's just some little bits of it left. So I just wanna keep doing what I'm doing for a little bit longer. Um, I'm gonna try and not remove that stuff myself because that is giving me the indication that you know there's progress being made. So I'm gonna just try and sort of leave that as it is at the moment. Fish though are oh, so good. They're so nice, aren't they? Look at how good they look. Super duper healthy. Look at this one. I love this one's head. It's so thick. Thick. Look at my thick discus here. Don't know why he's southern, but never mind. <laughs> thick. <laughs> but yeah, this is going to look great. See, so I'm really just waiting for a couple more days, maybe, uh, maybe a week at most. And then I think we could put the new stir by Corydoras in. And they're just going to look so good, aren't they? Like orange and the colours on them are really going to stand out against that white substrate. And for those of you that didn't see previously, here they are. I'm going to get some cool close ups of them because they're such nice fish. These are currently my favorite Corydoras. I've managed to find some uh, gold laser Corys as well, which I'm hoping to order and they should arrive soon, which will be good. So a moss ball right in the way. Look at that, and he's turning. But these are really gonna set it off. And if I go back to the shop where I got them from and they got some more, I'm gonna get them. I think I want a few more. I think I wanna get like a nice school of 12, to be honest. I think that'll look really good in that aquarium. It's a big aquarium, remember, and six might get lost. Let me know if you think I should get 12 instead of the six. I mean, who am I kidding? You guys always say more Corys, more Corys. I could have 20 Corys and you'd go, nah, you should really have a school of 28 Corys. <laughs> now nah, I'm just kidding. Most of you guys have been in the hobby longer than I have and actually know more than me anyway. So it has now been three days since I first filled up the Amazon Aquarium. I don't know, <laughs> why am I doing that? <laughs> since I filled up the Amazon Aquarium, you can see behind me. Let's take a look and see what changes have happened in those three days. Now that sounds like, what well, nothing's happened. It does. When you first set up an aquarium, stuff happens. Right, first and foremost, you can see there, all of the murkiness is now gone from the water and it is crystal clear. Second point, all of the uh, limnophila and also the, the kabumba is sort of out, if you like. It's all pointing up in the right direction. It looks like little fluffy green clouds. How cool does that look? Let me get some close-ups in there, look. Look at that. Uh, so nice looking, isn't it? And then, yeah, so the wood, I can tell, is starting to get a very, very slight greeny tinge to it. That's pretty normal for big pieces of bog wood. Um, if you're wondering how I'm getting the, stopping the water from going fully sort of like tinted and brown, I've got Purigen in this in this filter. Purigen pulls sort of tannings out of the water and locks them in. So yeah, that's what that's why that's that's working how that is. I am expecting to get a big diatom outbreak. That's fine. When that starts to happen, I'll introduce the fish that can eat that. I don't want to introduce them before it happens because obviously that will be their food source. And if I do it now, they won't have a food source. So, and the fish that I'm talking about is going to be Otosynclis, uh, Siamese algae eaters, and and stress and se and Cistrus plecos. I mean, they do such a good job. I mean, it'd be silly not to put them in this awesome tank. Now, after I finish doing this video, which is very shortly, I'm going to be adding some really cool immersed plants. That's what I've got these guys for. I've got um, three pieces of these, which as we've seen from one of my recent build videos, piece of these work so well with just their roots in the water. And I've also got one more Monstera or Monstera plant, just like that one, but smaller. And I wanna put the, I wanna put the same thing over this side, but in the water. Um, I mean, 
all these things are really good. They're going to pull nitrates out of the water, in increase the look as well that we want, the whole Amazon look. Should be sort of plants then coming over the whole top. How cool is that going to be? Like? Yeah, anyway, that's, that's to come in the next episode for this video and also new fish. So, oh, I cannot wait. So much going on with this tank. It's going to look insane by the time we're done with it. So that is the end of the vlog. And as you guys can see, there's so much going on at the moment. So if you haven't already, click the like, click the subscribe button and I will see you on the next one.